Welcome back to the channel everyone. This is our second episode and in this episode we're going to be running through the engine. Everything that I did to it, all the modifications, all the custom work, all the tanks, all the different lines, everything that I've done to make this what you see here, we're going to go through it step by step. Stay tuned. So first thing let's cover is surge tanks or swash, slosh pots as some people call them. So this is where I've mounted mine in the engine bay here. Now some people do mount them in the boot. I understand that sometimes there's just no room in the engine bay and the only place you can put it is in the boot. However in Queensland it's actually illegal to have these in the boot. And the reason why is because it's a fire hazard. There's a, there is a, a, a very good reason why fuel is separated out of the cabin. These lines are actually pressurized up to 70 to 80 PSI. If they pop or blow and come into contact with some type of ignition source or electricity that creates a spark, all of a sudden you've got an explosion inside the cabin of your car, which obviously you end up burning alive. So the beauty about having the surge tank in the engine bay here is that if something like that does happen, the fire is contained inside the engine bay, giving you a chance to grab a fire extinguisher come and put the fire out and potentially save the car also. Uh, the same scenario happens in your boot. Uh, you're more than likely gonna either be killed or lose your car at the very least because it'll be a lot harder to put that fire out uh, once it takes hold of all the interior stuff inside the back boot of the car. Uh, so the reason why we have these slosh pots is so that we can supply a continuous supply of fuel to the motor. Remember, rotaries do not like lean out events. Okay, so we need to have a stable supply of fuel delivered to the engine. Now to do that, we've got two 800 horsepower Aeroflow fuel pumps. Now, a lot of people told me, you know, the Aeroflow won't be able to hold up to the task. However, I haven't had a problem with these. They've been, they've been doing perfect. Uh, I haven't had any issues so far. So um, yeah, let's see how they go. Now, how does a surge tank work? It's very simple. Basically, this tank constantly stays filled, uh, filled up with fuel in order, so these uh, fuel pumps never are exposed to air. So they, they never suck up air and you never get a, a drop in fuel pressure, which obviously would cause a lean out event. So that's why we have these small little tanks with the fuel pumps in them, and they're always supplied with fuel from the main tank. Now in this particular car, the RX-8, it actually has four fuel pumps. Two are here, and the other two are in the tank. Now one, well the other two are lift pumps. One is to supply fuel from one side of the tank to the other and then the other side of the tank pumps the fuel back up into the surge tank and keeps this thing full. Uh, a cool feature, which I'll show you in a second, is how I can bypass the fuel using the Helltech. Uh, I'll, I'll chuck in a little video of that. Another cool feature with the Helltech is I've got these, um, these button pads here, which are programmed to do all sorts of different things. Um, but one of the things I can do is cycle the fuel pumps um, so if I want to, this is a fuel flex system, which basically means if I want to run E85, the tune can be adjusted to detect how much methanol is inside the fuel and then adjust the tune or adjust the map to suit. Now, if I want to cycle the fuel around so that I can fuel my slosh tank and get rid of any, uh, normal pump gas fuel in there, I can simply override the pump so that it will remain on cycling the fuel while the engine is switched off. So these are some of the cool things that you can do with Helltech. Uh, we'll, go in, we'll go into the other features that uh, are on this 
particular setup a, a bit later. So I will show you a few pictures, uh, sorry, a few videos of how I assembled this and uh, the assembly of the engine on the bench. And then we'll go into the other aspects of the engine and how I put it all together. So I just finished modifying this surge tank. Actually, I'm not finished. I've got a few threads to tap now. But this is the computer for the power steering module, which is going to go on the bottom of it. And bolt to that, like so. And I've got four holes to tap in here. I've actually got rod going in the corner there as well, see? So I'll be tapping four screw holes in here. And then this goes here like so. Third tank is fitted. And there we have the finished product. So there you have it guys. There's the surge tank all fitted up and how I made it. This is using all the original uh, mounting points on the car. I didn't, I didn't uh, cut anything or add any new bolt holes or screw holes. I used all the original stuff. So to try, my goal is to try and go for as factory as, as I possibly can. All right, so let's move on to the exhaust manifold and uh, turbo setup, and we'll go through that as well. I'll also show some clips of the, the, the block assembly and the exterior bolt-ons, all of that sort of going together on the bench. Working on the fuel system. Just finished making these brackets here. So now that is all solid. I've got another rail that goes down in here. It's still coming for the two injectors that go here. And then I've got to make the pipes to connect it all up. But that is the fuel regulator done. Not far from putting this thing in. So this is the wastegate for the turbo. <clears throat> so basically, um, this pipe here bypasses the turbo and this valve closes it and opens it and then dumps the exhaust straight back into the uh, main dump pipe. So that's basically what controls the turbo speed. Um, that's the last step for the turbo setup, the turbo manifold. I've just got to <coughs> finish welding a few things and um, the turbo manifold is complete and it's going to get wrapped and uh, painted and all the rest. This is the most itchy fucking shit. I'm just itchy everywhere from it. It's ridiculous. So after I'd finished uh, wrapping the, the exhaust manifold, I then had to obviously construct the dump pipe and connect the wastegate valve up, get all that sort of plumbed in. Um, that was a bit of a challenge actually. The, uh, the exhaust manifold is made out of pressure pipe and that was all constructed here. Then after I was happy with the manifold, the way it was all assembled, then I basically did the heat wrap and then moved on to painting the turbo uh, or the compressor side or compressor housing of the turbo. 
and uh, getting the rest of the hot side of the engine uh, buttoned up with the plumbing of the uh, coolant lines and stuff like that. So after that was all finished, then I basically moved on to the inner cooler and started to the fitment of that. So, update. Basically, I've been tightening coolant lines for the final time. So all of these lines are now done. Oil line, oil return, coolant lines. I got these two. This is the radiator lines. They're gonna hook up to there and there. I've got to rebuild this bracket again for the freaking third time because it's too close to me um, fan belt for my spark plug leads. So they're all gonna to bunch together neatly, run up onto this and then go down onto the plugs, which I've got done. Apart from that, all the other lines are done, tightened, clamped, crimped, friggin' look at that shit, mate. All right, and I've got to build a pipe from here. It's got to bend out and have a cap here. That's for the oil filler. That's my next little modification. So, V-mount intercooler and radiator setup slowly coming together. The back part is actually done. I just got to make two brackets at the front here, but um, I've run out of steel, so I'm calling it quits for today. But she's coming together, mate. So once I get these two pieces in and secure, which shouldn't take me long, uh, then I've just got a, a little bit of pipe work to do, which is easy, mate. And uh, we'll be ready to fire this thing up. So the intercooler setup, I, I got a little bit slack with the, with the filming and didn't get much video of actually fabricating that because um, there was a lot of just cutting and moving and changing and trying and, and it just was a, a very laborious um, task. So anyway, the intercooler is set up in a V-mount uh, configuration so it ended up sitting basically like so I know you don't can't really see that very well but the radiator is sitting down there on the bottom and then obviously the, the inner cooler is on the top now the beauty about having a configuration like this is that you get cool air hitting both heat exchangers at the same time rather than having the inner cooler in front of the radiator and then the radiator getting secondhand air which is obviously already heated up which then in turn heats the engine up so this is the most efficient way to cool your engine and in fact in my last trip to uh, spring mount raceway it was very cold in the morning heading up there, but my intake temps got down as low as six degrees and the engine running temperature was 60 degrees. So um, it is definitely, I highly recommend if you have the room to set up a V-mount system, you should definitely put one in. I highly recommend it. Gonna bring her up to temp and uh, work on me tune. Got me headphones on because it's fucking ridiculously loud. All right, let's fire this baby up. All 
Uh, let's try again. Made a few corrections. Let's try again. She shouldn't rev up high now. So a few other details about the engine. Uh, the engine block itself has been studded, which I highly recommend. Uh, studying the block stops block twist and it just strengthens the block overall. Uh, this particular engine has been bridge ported, which if I know, from knowing what I know now, I, and, and the next engine I do, I'll be going with a semi-peripheral port simply because I liked the fact that the, the fuel and air coming in helps cool the apex seal from the center and not from the sides. So I, I think that's a better, uh, a better way of doing it. Plus you still get a nice wrap with a semi-peripheral port as well. The other things that has been done to this block is the exhaust ports have been opened up the flywheel is a, is a lightened and balanced flywheel. The, the rotors uh, were balanced and also clearanced by Promaz. The whole rotation assembly was also balanced by Promaz, which again, thanks Simon. Um, absolutely appreciate all the help that you guys have done. And um, I think that pretty much concludes this video today. As always, guys, if you think that, or guys and girls, if, if you have learned anything from today's video, please consider liking and subscribing. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to YouTube. It's completely free. I spoke to a guy at the racetrack the other day who said that he didn't want to subscribe because he didn't want to pay any money. Um, YouTube doesn't cost any money to subscribe and it really, really helps us out. So please like the, the video and, and also subscribe. And uh, we'll see you for the next one. The next video will be on the interior. And this was a big one. I have to say the interior, especially the floor, uh, was probably my most hated task of this whole project. And I have to say, after giving up drinking alcohol, I think uh, if anyone can sew a floor together and still manage to stop drinking, then I think you can accomplish anything. It, that was a very, very hard challenge for me. So um, anyway, we'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.